My name is Emilie Maria, and I am the director of the short film Sverdrag. Sverdrag is about a, a young person called Milo, who's living in a home for angry, troubled girls. And Milo is really close to one of the caretakers, Nikki, because he is the only one who sees their gender transitioning. And one day, uh, Milo found out that Nikki is going to quit. And that's going to be a lot of drama from there. Perfect. Lige sådan her. Hvad det der? Er det koldt? Nej, det er sygt. Okay. Det er sygt. Det er noget Der jeg bare lige kørt det godt igennem det hele, så der ikke kun sidder sådan nogle klumper. Nu skal fordele det godt ud. Ned til samme side. Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean Borbo back, and this time we are discussing the short film The Shift. Hi, welcome to the Teddy. Welcome to the Berlinale. Um, we are very happy that you have the time to talk to us. Um, Let's maybe start with the main character of the film, Milo. Um, can you tell us a bit about where is Milo in when when we meet them in this film? Well, sorry, I didn't get the last one. Just uh, where where is this character when we meet them in in the film? Ah, yeah. Well, um, Milo is living in a home for angry, unstable girls. Um, and we meet them uh, in the middle of her regular life there yeah. uh, on the institution. And they are really close to one of the caretakers, teachers working there, Nikki. And Milo is really much like mirroring um, them into this Nikki character. Mm. Um, and he is the only person uh, that we that Milo really talk to and share things with and then we found out or Milo found out that uh, Nikki um, are gonna quit the job and that's gonna cause a lot of drama yeah absolutely um i th- i thought that it was a very interesting moment in Milo's life um that you capture um in the film it's like um it's a bit of a an in between space um where they are on multiple levels can you talk a bit about this yeah i think i had um for me my gender questioning and fluid identity never were really very verbal or yeah. i wasn't speaking loud about it um and i want the milo character as well to be like that to reflect that in myself and i talked a lot with the anna charlie who is playing milo yeah. and we talked about this this is a character in transitioning um so we actually also been using she and them in the like practicing and by scene by scene like when is where is Milo right now in the scenes Mm -hmm. and yeah and for us it really made sense not to uh, 
to tell it that Milo shouldn't say it, but but shows it through the mirroring of uh, Nikki and like the isolating them from the other uh, girls at the at the home. Yeah, absolutely. Um, visually speaking, what was your visual approach to tell this story? You are mentioning this aspect of mirroring between the two characters, and then there are like quite frequent use of mirror shots and and all of that. Can you tell a bit about um, what was your idea behind the visual identity of the film? Yeah. Um... First, I had a lot of development with my um, uh, photographer. Um, we are really, really close uh, and we okay. work a lot together. And we wanted to make a, like that's where we, we first talked about uh, shooting the whole film in like uh, the square format yeah. because we wanted to always be in Milo Square uh, space um, and like have a lot of portrait uh, shots. Like we see the whole film through Milo and are always with them. Yeah. And we talked a lot about um, like using different um, movements. For example, when Milo and Nikki are together, we are shooting all of the scenes, almost uh, handheld with the camera. So like we're really there and because Milo is really there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and when we are uh, in the institution with the other girls and the other uh, teachers, caretakers, um, it's way more stylistic and like um, the camera is static. And that's because we wanted to show the, the different feelings uh, that Milo has when they're in the different situations. So that was a thing we really talked a lot about, mm. like how can the camera tell the feelings that Milo has <laughs> yeah. about the situation or yeah, what is going on. Yeah, it was also this whole topic of gender identity um, and Milo's um, finding and in a way like becoming into, into themselves. Um, it was throughout a like a central topic to the film, but it was not very overstated. Um, how did you approach this particular element of the film? Mm, I knew from the beginning that I wanted Milo to be a queer character, mm -hmm. but I also knew that I didn't want to make a coming out story. Yeah. That was not the essential of the film. Um, also because like I miss a uh, queer characters in film was not a coming out story mm. but um yeah so i wanted to be a part of the character and especially like i think many queer persons or uh, or people in general can relate to having a role model um mm. and i wanted to like look into the relationship of having a role model and what is happening when when you're losing your role model yeah. um so i wanted to have a story that a lot of people could relate to but with a queer character uh but not saying out loud that it is a queer character does that make sense yeah absolutely sense? Yeah, yeah 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 totally um this dynamic between milo and nikki was also interesting um in the sense that as you say milo is like mirroring themselves through Nikki and like kind of trying to yeah as you say pick up a lot of things from them because they are this role model uh, for them but at the same time the main journey in this film is still Milo's journey and how they kind of deal with their own self and try to come to terms with with themselves um can you explain a bit about this dynamic between the two characters mm, yeah as i said like uh, having milor or having nikki as role model and they they have a lot of fun together but actually they're not talking that much with each other they have a really physical and uh, language together for example every morning when he's uh, waking milo up He's um, doing this in the table, like 
they are and they are dancing in the kitchen and they have they don't talk a lot because they they know <laughs> each other and okay. and actually both of them are really bad at saying how they feel uh, so that's where they they meet because yeah i don't know it was really fun also working with the nikki character because he's taking care of young troubled kids but he's actually not good at talking about how he feels himself so that's the thought was that's made maybe what makes him a really good caretaker because he can relate so much instead of being just the grown-up uh i know more kind of person mm. he's actually really like young in his mind um so that was really funny uh -huh. also like we talked a lot about the relationship between them these yeah. two characters like a uh, role model but also friendship and like a father figure or also we talked about this happening something you look up to you can almost feel a little in love yeah, without yeah. being in love with them but just so fascinated and so you feel warm and I grew up without a father so I had a lot uh, of these kind of uh, relationships to teachers and soccer trainers and stuff like that in my past mm. um, and I felt all those uh, feelings about this man <laughs> character at once um, which are a gray area in a relationship but but I really wanted to like deep into that kind of relationship mm. and how can I portray or how can we portray a relationship who are both like a father figure, a role model, a friend, a brother? Yeah. Do I want to be with you or do I want to be you? And yeah, that was really funny working with especially Milo character and be like, what do we feel in this scene? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it was also difficult because it's not only one thing. It's a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like quite a complex set of yeah. emotions and relations um, in within one relationship. Um, I was wondering, because you also pointed it out, that obviously, and of course this is something that um, in one way or another most of us can relate to, that when you sort of lose a role model in your life, um, that that results in some kind of breakage in um, in in how you look at the world and how you relate to the world and it can especially at a young age result in I don't know feeling lost and and all of that but in this particular context and in this particular environment where Milo is I would imagine that that's uh, that that's an even bigger deal um can you tell us about because it it felt a bit of a i don't know even like a social critique in 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 that way and of course that also really explains a lot of milo's reaction to um to this news yeah i think um one of the questions i had was uh, because when we're looking at the systems where we place children mm -hmm. in a really, really young age, um, and they meet so many adults in their short life, and of course some of them are going to quit or something's going to happen, or they're going to uh, go to an age where they have to switch to another institution and stuff like that. But I think I was wondering... Does we have a uh, do we have a system that actually reproduce uh, the abandoned feelings or the betray feelings uh, that these children have, uh, and most of them comes with from their own family. Like yeah. most of the children starting out in their young life with with parents who can't take care of them or they have too many troubles to staying at home, and then they come into the system and and again and again and again being heard. Um, I don't have the answer to it, but I, I, I wanted to like show how difficult it is. Also because when you're in an inst institution, your world is so small. Like it is your whole world. Like we can, like other people who are not in an institution can go to other places or change school or do stuff like that. But, but 
young people who are in that kind of institutions, they're really there. So that's why the whole the whole world change uh, when one adult uh, is quitting. Yeah. Yeah, well, thank you so much um, for this uh, very lovely talk. Um, I wish you all the best for the Berlinale. And yeah, hopefully we will see each other at some point throughout the festival. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.